Supreme Chancellor Obi Wan Kenobi by Stone Freak. Chapter sixty five. Anakin and Ahsoka return to Coruscant. Returning to the temple seems almost unreal. Despite everything going on in the galaxy, the temple has always been a point of calm, the eye of the storm. But now, when Anakin walks these familiar halls again, his second home. The one not built of sand and stone in the hottest of deserts, and not the one in an upper Coruscant apartment that smells of perfume. It seems as if the very air of it has changed. The sense of peace, of tranquility that usually suffuses the place, even in the midst of war, has been shattered and the pieces lay around his feet. Ahsoka's presence at his side is not as grounding as it should be. Her shields are up high, held so tightly around her he cannot sense her emotions at all. He can see that she shivers and she has her arms wrapped around herself. They've spoken many times since he brought her the news of of Obi-Wan, but she has been unusually tight-lipped. She won't meet his eyes, and the spark he saw in her when they sparred, one blade against two, is completely gone. She won't speak to him. Why won't she speak to him? No matter how much he presses, she stays silent, and the more he tries, the further back she retreats. Perhaps he should have tried harder. More used his status as her master to make her tell him. It's Ahsoka, his Padawan. He loves her so much, of course she must tell him. But he's been distracted, unable to keep his own thoughts centered and away from Obi-Wan. He's heard no more news from Master Windu. No updates. Neither good or bad. Master Windu promised to contact him if something happened. But it's been days. Nothing. Is Obi-Wan that badly off? Is he really... He catches the briefest glimpse of Master Bilibud down the hallway. She looks pale and drawn, and for the briefest of instants, his stomach clenches in dread. He knows that she's a friend of Obi-Wan, even though she's much older. If she looks like that, has something... Beep, beep, beep. He startles at the sound of his comm signaling an incoming voice comm. He struggles to get it off his belt and fumbles with it, nearly dropping it several times before he finally has it steadily in his hand and ready by his mouth. Ahsoka would normally have laughed at him. Why isn't she laughing? If she can't even laugh... Skywalker, he says once he's answered the comm, casting his thoughts of Ahsoka aside again for now. Your daughter says, arrived on Coruscant, you have, yes? The old Jedi's voice should be calming in its familiarity, but in the current state of everything, it just sends a spike of anxiety through Anakin. Please, no. Yes, we have. Please don't say something has happened, please. Come to the halls of healing, you should. Once rested, you have. Awake, Master Obi-Wan is not, but feel your presence, I think you would like. And again, Olin just barely refrains from expressing his relief loudly. But as he relaxes in the corner of his eye, he can also see some tension leave Ahsoka's frame. Do you want to rest first, Snips, or do you want to go to the halls immediately? He says, turning to her. She bites her lip and still won't meet his eyes. I'd like to come now, Master, she says, voice unusually subdued. And again frowns. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like it at all. Still, it will have to wait. Obi-Wan is more important by now. Ahsoka seems mostly fine. It's probably just the whole thing with Obi-Wan that has her out of sorts. That's probably it. With a start, Anakin remembers that Master Yoda asked him a question. We'll head over immediately, Master. He rushes to say, nearly blurting out the words. Wait for you here. I will. Amusement is clear in Master Yoda's voice, and... If he sounds calm, then... Maybe there's no reason to worry? Maybe Obi-Wan really is fine. Anakin changes direction, heading right down a corridor instead of going straight to move towards the halls instead of the living quarters. You keep an up okay, Snips. He keeps his voice calm and collected through sheer force of will, even though he's still worried, still upset. He can't help but worry. What if they arrive in the halls and it's just Obi-Wan looking disappointed and the council telling him he failed the test, even though he had to fail it? For Zoka, it it seems absolutely overkill, and he doesn't think they would do such a thing to Anakin's entire battalion, but... But what if they do? He tries not to think of the anxiety churning of his stomach as he keeps walking, but it's hard. What will happen if he has failed some sort of test? 
The only sound in the room when Anakin and Ahsoka enter is the gentle hum of machines, and the only light source is the bluish glow of the Bacta tank. Master Obi-Wan seems somehow smaller than usual. It's hard for Ahsoka to put into words properly, but he seems diminished when he floats in the Bacta, eyes closed, probably sleeping. She can't decide what she should do or say. Part of her feels like she's intruding. She's not as close to Master Obi-Wan as Sky Guy is, so being here feels... wrong, maybe? Or perhaps that is her guilt. The knowledge that she'd felt something, sensed that something would happen, and despite years of training, years of being told that she should trust her emotions and search her feelings, she ignored it. She assumed that it was simply a flight of fancy, something she was imagining. And now Master Obi-Wan nearly died in an explosion. She's afraid of what would happen if she tells Anakin about it. Would he be mad at her? Renounce her? She doesn't think so. Normally, she wouldn't even contemplate it. It's not who Anakin is as a person, but... But... This is different, isn't it? Master has been different ever since he got the news. She's been different! She looks around the room. Master Yoda is sitting in a hover chair, eyes closed, and his head is resting against his hands, leaning on his gimmer stick. He seems so calm, so peaceful. Is everything really okay? We're here, Master Yoda, Anakin says, drawing Ahsoka's attention to him for a brief moment. Mm-hmm. There you are. Welcome back, you are. Thank you, Master. Anakin trails off and looks at the back of the tank. Soga bites her lip and doesn't say anything. Wonder how he is, do you? Master Yoda still hasn't opened his eyes and seems to be humming something under his breath in between speaking. Ahsoka wonders what he's doing. Is this some sort of master thing that she can't hope to understand yet? Or maybe it's just a Master Yoda thing. Yeah, I've been worried. Anakin doesn't usually admit to anything like that, so the words take Ahsoka by surprise. She finds herself staring at him openly. He really doesn't usually talk about his feelings openly, at least not when it comes to things like worry or fear. Worried we all were. But if you will, despite the Sith Lord's last attempt. The Sith Lord? Ahsoka draws in a sharp breath and her heart starts pounding in her chest. She could feel and hear her own pulse in her ears. The Sith Lord? What? The anger in Anakin's voice is almost frightening in its sudden intensity. He seemed calm just moments before, but now... Ahsoka finds herself shying away from him just slightly. Attacked, he did. Spiritual spirit. But here we were, and repelled the attack Master Vokara T. Did. Ahsoka feels cold, like something dark just washed over her. She freezes in place, her eyes trained on her master's almost deceptively still body. The Sith Lord tried to kill Obi-Wan. Anakin's voice wavers. It sounds fragile in a way she doesn't expect from him. But the situation they're in is so far from the norm that she's almost not surprised. Believe you orchestrated the bombing at the Senate. We have reason to. Master Yoda says, his voice still calm. He still hasn't opened his eyes, Ahsoka can see from the corner of her eyes. She wonders what he's doing. Is he meditating? But if he is, why here? So the Sith Lord is deliberately targeting Obi-Wan. Believe so, we do. Hate him, they do. Why we know not? Secret the attack must stay. Deserve to know you do, but speak of it, you must not. Ahsoka stares at Master Obi-Wan where he floats in the back to think. He's not safe, not even here, in the middle of the temple. Even the temple isn't safe. She stops paying attention to the conversation going on. Their voices become just background noise as she stares at the master of her master. Could this have been... Could this have been avoided if she'd only said something? Would the temple still be safe if the bombing had been stopped? Is this my fault? The words fall out of her mouth softly without thought. The sudden silence in the room is almost oppressive. Ahsoka, why would you ever think something like that? This is the work of the Sith Lord. Unless you're secretly them, this is not something you did. Anakin's voice seems far away, but it's stronger again. Less frail, as if he suddenly found new strength. But I... I felt... I ignored the warning. The Force warned me that something was wrong, that something would happen to Master Obi-Wan. And I ignored it. I told myself I was just imagining it. How was it not my fault that Master Obi-Wan was hurt? 
If I followed what I've been taught since I came to the temple as a child, I would have told someone, and then, and then, or something would happen. We did. Master Yoda interrupts her. His voice breaks through her panicked litany and leaves her head ringing with confusion, with a sudden silence of her thoughts. What? Anakin's voice is dripping with disbelief. You knew something was going to happen and you didn't stop it. Anger. Familiar. Sense something, Obi-Wan and I did. Muddled. Diminished our view of the future is. Sense it well we cannot. But sense something we did. Prepare we did. Ready the halls were. Brought troopers with him, Obi-Wan did. Had we not acted as such. Survived. He would not have. Ahsoka stumbles into a seat. Your fault, this is not, Ahsoka. Master Yoda's face is solemn, his eyes finally open as she looks at him. Sense the future before, have you? She pauses, struggles to think of a time when she's felt something like that before. She comes up blank. No. Late it is for blooming impressions, but unheard of it is not. If never felt it before, have you? Recognize it, how would you? A heavy hand falls on her shoulder, and she looks up to find Anakin staring at her. I, uh, had something similar. I started having dreams. Ultimately, those dreams led to a vision. I've never had anything before or since, though. Anakin seems reluctant to mention the topic at all. They are hard to recognize when you don't know what they're like, Ahsoka. I'm not sure I would recognize it if it happened again. But I... I didn't trust my feelings. I should have. Careful, one must be when sensing the future. Chasing big feelings. Foolish it is. Your fault this could never be. If it happens again, I will tell someone. She makes the promise to them as much as herself. The guilt she's carried since she got the news, thinking that maybe she could have changed it somehow, is hard to let go of. But there's a sort of relief in knowing that she wasn't the only one. The Master Obi-Wan didn't stand or fall depending on her choice. That would have been too heavy. That's good, Ahsoka. That's all anyone could ask of you. Master once said that you often don't recognize your first vision as visions, even if you have them often. She nods, unsure. She's had some instruction about visions. Everyone does, since anyone can have one, though some are more prone than others. But she still feels wrong-footed with how she did not recognize it. She should have, shouldn't she? Speak to a mind healer? Do you wish? Master Yoda's face is kind, but she can sense some worry. No! She blurts, unable to stop herself. No, it's not that bad, and I've just felt a bit guilty. I'm fine. It's not bad enough that I'd need to talk to a mind healer. She's fine. Just fine. Serious to talk to mind healer? It need not be. Master Yoda suddenly looks sad. Shameful to speak with a mind healer at a start. Of course not. She knows that. She just doesn't need to. She's fine. I used to go to a mind healer, Anakin suddenly says. What? And Zoko finds herself staring at him. He doesn't even like going to the regular healers, but he went to a mind healer? I, uh, came to the temple in an unusual way. And I was part of the Battle of Naboo. He scratches the back of his head. Everyone just wanted to make sure I was okay, give me a helping hand if I needed it. He shrugs one shoulder. Oh, yes! See, Master has still it, yes! Master Yoda looks sad, even more so than before. And Anakin, his eyes turn to the ground, and she can feel the sadness coming off him, too. I did, yeah. Until she died. Oh. She died? It must have been a long time ago, because Ahsoka doesn't really recognize the name. Yeah, I was around 12 at the time. She went on a mission and just never came back. I was given the option of grief counseling and finding a new healer to talk to if I wanted to. But I decided not to. To help mediate a conflict she went. Traumatized children there were. Calm it was supposed to be, but wrong something went. Renewed the hostilities did and caught it a crossfire, Master Hestish was. Master Yoda's ears droop slightly. Oh, I see. And again says, looking far away. They never told me what happened, really, just that she'd returned to the Force. Ahsoka feels oddly like an outsider, as if she's listening to a conversation she shouldn't be hearing, as if she was eavesdropping. She curls in on herself, unsure of what she should do. 
Master Obi-Wan went for grief counseling right after Master Qui-Gon died, so we went to the Mind Healers together the first few months. And again, nods to himself, There's really no shame in going to talk to them, Ahsoka, and it doesn't have to be bad for you to do it. Sometimes it helps to talk to someone who's been trained to be objective. I even developed an affinity for the sound of someone writing with a Bristol pen on flimsy, because Master Hestiche would always take notes like that. I find the sound comforting, really. He laughs, rather awkwardly, but it does make Ahsoka feel better. Maybe, maybe she should, but later. She looks at the back of the tank again and her chest hurts. Even the temple isn't safe. Anakin feels kind of bad. Here he is telling his Padawan how good it can be to talk to a mind healer, even when it's not something big, even though he's been avoiding it since he was 19 and mom died. He should probably go. Master Hestiche would probably think it would be beneficial for him, but... Mind healers take notes. They probably share those with the council. How can he possibly talk about what's really bothering him if the person he's talking to will report it to the council? If it had been Master Hestiche, well, they could probably convince her to keep it secret, but... Anyone else? No, it's better if he just keeps it to himself. He doesn't want to be kicked out of the Order. He doesn't want to lose his second home. While he knows that his home with Padme would still be there, how could he possibly do his best for the galaxy, the kind of thing that drew Padme to him in the first place, if he's no longer with the Jedi? How can he be a hero if he's not a Jedi? He left his mother to become a Jedi. How could he ever leave it behind? Leaving Tatooine, leaving his mother, he left the culture he was raised in. Sure, it was the culture of slaves, beings who didn't even own their own bodies, but it was theirs, secret and precious. Having to leave the Jedi, the home he's had for most of his life. He can't bear the thought of losing it, just like he can't bear the thought of losing Padme. He wants all of it! His place with the Jedi, his friendship with Obi-Wan, his marriage with Padme. Losing any of it would be intolerable. And if that means that he can't go talk to a mind healer and instead has to keep his worries on the inside, then so be it. Better to carry some worry around with him and struggle with his emotions on occasion than lose everything he has and loves.